Hey guys, Peter here. Today, I just wanted to talk to you guys about how to acquire a Z-Stack. Um, specifically, we're going to be using the Confocal, but this goes for really any microscope using Elements software. So just to begin with, I already have Elements opened right here, and you can see it's a blank screen. To get started, I'm going to go ahead and right-click anywhere in here and open up ND Acquisition, because ND Acquisition is the window that's going to allow me to do a Z-Stack. So to find that, you go to Acquisition Controls, and then ND Acquisition right here. So open this up, and this window comes up. Let's talk a little bit about what we're seeing here. So we've navigated here, and there's essentially three ways of acquiring a Z-Stack. The most common is the one you see right here, which is defined by the top and bottom. And that is where you are going to go into live mode and you're going to say, this is the top and this is the bottom. And I've got a sample already present on the stage. I'm actually just going to go ahead and show that, show how this, this kind of works in practice. So I'm going to open the tie pad, which uh, as you probably already know, is used for all the microscope control. And I also want to open actual confocal component. So to do that, we're going to go A1 plus compact GUI. So again, the first way of doing this is doing top and bottom. There's another way, which is a symmetric mode where you basically tell it, just acquire a Z stack around this range, this volume or this, this depth, excuse me. There's an asymmetric method too, where you can basically say, okay, above, if you want your top, uh, half to be larger than your bottom half or vice versa, this is good for that. But generally speaking, most people are going to choose the defined by top and bottom. It's very rare that someone would probably want to do the symmetrical or asymmetrical unless you had a very specific experiment with a Z series that you were interested in performing. So I do think it's actually good to go ahead and reset your coordinates when you get started. And if I were to set up my Z series, what I want to do first is just identify you know, maybe a floor four that you want to use to kind of get your bearing straight in an image. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up so that I can see my image. And right now I've got it so that I'm going to do my 561 setup. And I'm going to set this to left 100 so that I can see with my detectors. And I'm going to hit play and we'll see what happens. I'm acquiring an image. I'm actually going to drop that resolution down to 512, so it'll do it a little quicker. I want to see this a little better, so I'm going to go to Visualization, LUTs, and this is my signal. I'm just going to tell it to automatically um, adjust it, and because all I'm really doing here is making sure that I can quickly determine what's top and what's bottom. And I'm going to determine what's top and bottom by basically where it starts to go out of focus. This is a very thin sample. It's just some slides that were provided by Nikon. And uh, it doesn't have much volume. So obviously, this, your, your mileage is going to vary with this step depending on how thick your sample is. But as I was saying, we, we reset the coordinates. So now what we need to do is, is basically go through to the top. And you can tell it's going to the top by the number here is going to go up. Right, so right now it's going to 1060, and I'm just going to have it go. And basically, what I should see here is that this should gradually go out of focus. It's going up a little bit more, and now it's, it's pretty much out of focus completely. It's a little bit because there's some brighter areas, and let's call this the, the, the top. Let's see, it's starting to go out of focus here. There we go. So I'm going to call this the top, because if I go any further, I'm not going to get any real resolution there. So I'm calling that top. And I'm going to go the opposite way now and find the bottom. As you can see, it's going through the same slices it was just going through. And I'm looking for the same level of non-focus, essentially, to find out where the bottom is. And when I say bottom, I'm really talking about a relative position here. I'm not calling this the actual bottom of my sample. This is just where it starts to go out of focus and I can no longer resolve all the details in my image. So I'm going to call this bottom and now I will click stop. So I'm not continuing to do this 
per, my, my sample by imaging continuously. And what we see here is that there's a series of positions that have accumulated. The first one here is what I call top. And then the bottom one I just found is, is right here. And you can tell it, you, you can tell it to go to the top if you want by just double clicking here and it'll go all the way to the top. You can tell it to go to the bottom, same thing. And importantly, it's already defined for me what the range is here, 16.7 microns. And you can tell it to go a certain step size. So if I wanted to go 10 microns per step, you can do that and it automatically rounds everything. So it'll take three steps, essentially, where the first step, it'll take an image of, it's probably down here, and then it'll take another step 10, 10 microns from there, and then it'll do some third step that's going to be about probably 6.7. So that's where those three steps are coming from. This is a suggested step size, and this is suggested based on Nyquist sampling. I'm not going to go into Nyquist sampling here, but suffice it to say, this is essentially the smallest step size you can do where you start before you start oversampling. So if I were to try to do uh, like 0.6 or something, that would be so small that I would get diminishing returns on my imaging where it wouldn't matter. As you can see here, this if I decide to automate the step size based on what Nikon suggests, I get many more steps, right? 23 steps. And your decision in your imaging experiment is basically, do I want to do that many steps or do I want to change this? And you can say, instead of doing 23 steps, I prefer to do five. And that automatically adjusts your step size to be 4.175. So this is gonna be up to you in the end. Some people have mined exactly the number of steps, therefore the number of images they want to acquire. Some people are, are less uh, strict on that. So in the end, it'll be up to you to decide exactly the size of your volume. And that's going to depend on, on the amount of time you want to take in your experiment and so on. So I'm not going to belabor this point too much, but once you've determined uh, what your range is in your top and bottom, you can hit Run Now. And I'm actually going to select here I'm going to ask it to take all three of these wavelengths. I'll go into detail later about um, how to set up optical configurations. Basically, all I'm asking elements to do here is at every single step, Z step or focal plane, I want it to acquire all three of my wavelengths. Okay. So my Z series has finished. It has automatically saved this entire ND file into this desktop folder that I just made. I'll test, you can see it's right here. This file contains all of this data present here. But just to refocus again on what, what's been done here, um, these are my five images here. If I wanted to, I could actually go ahead and construct a volume of what I'm looking at here. And with that, I think I'll, I'll end this video. And um, if you have any questions or uh, suggestions, please shoot me an email at opticalcore at biochem.wisc.edu. Thanks for watching.